Hello all. It has been an uh, enriching uh, conference. Uh, many thanks uh, to organizers. Uh, but of course, with uh, such a good conference, with good presentations in one topic, uh, the uh, uh, final ones uh, are uh, slightly challenged. Uh, anticipating that I chose uh, uh, some topics uh, and uh, I'm happy to see that my gut feeling uh, didn't betray me. Uh, uh, maybe I have some uh, things to contribute to the general debate. So uh, what uh, is uh, the key uh, interest in my presentation is to uh, somehow uh, uh, position populism uh, in contemporary times. And uh, uh, my perspective is much informed uh, uh, from uh, uh, political science uh, perspective. So uh, my uh, thoughts on populism are influenced uh, uh, strongly by two um, uh, quite recent experiences. Uh, I had to write uh, uh, the preface to the Estonian translation to Jan Werner Müller's book on populism, and of course uh, 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 it required some thinking on the topic. And currently I am in Yale University and I have read uh, uh, also some US uh, classics on political science. Uh, so, uh, to a surprising degree, uh, uh, many of us who have presented here have looked uh, uh, on the literature uh, dating back maybe a century or so, plus minus. And um, also from US uh, authors, you can find uh, many thoughts uh, that uh, uh, are well contributing to contemporary times. For example, Lipman discusses also the transformation of liberalism, liberal democracy, its many faces, uh, connection to uh, uh, the great uh, 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 economic and technological transformations, and uh, also something we would now term populist uh, challenges, even though he uses a slightly different uh, vocabulary. Now, to start discussing populism, uh, we need to uh, be very clear-cut we are uh, discussing uh, about. Uh, as seen also during this event, there are many definitions, and if you uh, are somewhat loose, you can already have heated uh, debates on the issue. Um, so, uh, my first effort is to uh, relate populism to politics uh, uh, in very general terms. My second uh, uh, aim today is to put uh, this uh, understanding of populism then into the context of our times. Uh, but let's see uh, uh, how uh, uh, these two steps then uh, unfold. I would argue for a much more uh, relaxed perspective on populism as compared to many speakers. And this uh, comes uh, um, uh, from my understanding of its um, positive and negative aspects uh, that are based uh, uh, to its uh, relation to politics uh, as such. But first, uh, which kind of populism I am uh, referring to when I am speaking of also positive possibilities of populism? 
Uh, if we take a very rough division, uh, for example, Oxford Handbook uh, on Populism uh, uh, differentiates between three perspectives. Ideational, it's a kind of set of ideas. Uh, something called political strategic, it's basically regime uh, um, and uh, leadership perspective. And uh, uh, sociocultural style perspective. I'm mostly combining the two last ones. And for me, populism is a political strategy. Not a coherent set of ideas. Only then can I cover the 1920s US agrarianism, the new left grassroots uh, initiatives and all kinds of initiatives, and the nationalist right-wing populism. If we try to speak of it as an ideology, then we have to cut something out from what has been called populism. So this style has some specific features. They have been well covered, so I will not go into depth uh, with that. But what I would like to emphasize once more is that this uh, style of engaging people using strong personalities and uh, maybe fierce vocabulary is not actually very new. Actually, the faction of Populares was present already in ancient Rome. Of course, it is not uh, quite similar to contemporary politics, but uh, this uh, populistic strategy uh, is not something that has just uh, sprung, uh, sprung up uh, now after the financial crisis. It, it, it has come and gone. It has been stronger and weaker. And why I think such a strategy could also have something to contribute. Um, this is related to uh, my understanding of politics as uh, the realm of the possible, or humanly possible. Uh, the question is that uh, if you have something you can debate on, uh, if you can have several perspectives on a problem, an issue, whatever, uh, then uh, it's uh, the condition of uh, human politics. The contrary of that would be no debate. One truth, maybe very optimal truth, clear facts, uh, and uh, this is in some way the managerial end of uh, no politics. Uh, for example, Colin Hay has uh, developed this understanding of uh, issues uh, politicizing and depoliticizing. And politicizing issues always involves uh, uh, different options. And most likely many of them are good options. When we uh, think of our last decades, especially in Europe, they have been much influenced by uh, something I term neoliberalism. Once again, it's uh, the question of definition. I can't work it out very much, uh, but uh, what I'm referring to is the understanding that we have clear-cut solutions that are better than the others. These are much related to the dogmas of uh, neoclassical economic theory as developed uh, in the EU context. In this way, uh, we reach uh, the realm of the uh, non-political. We depoliticize topics, institutions, and somehow uh, it seems people are not needed anymore in politics. We only have to wait uh, up uh, to a supercomputer to calculate it all. So populism here, of course, as appealing to people, is a potentially liberating force. 
Uh, this way, it contains uh, positive aspects. But, of course, it's not the uh, uh, whole story. Politics has another uh, uh, central feature. And this is uh, something I could call uh, coalition building for majority, pluralism, uh, the uh, somehow uh, both diversity and then ability to uh, reach majorities in this diversity. Here, it could also be much developed, but um, I just limit myself to Müller, who criticizes what is his reading of populism precisely because populists are not able to take uh, others uh, seriously. Uh, if they are the representatives of the soul of the people, their uh, opponents must then be enemies of the people. And of course, this is no way of uh, uh, doing politics, at least democratic politics as well. So, populist, of course, has uh, uh, much dangers uh, uh, accompanying uh, his, uh, let's say, new uh, perspectives and uh, new openings uh, uh, in politics. And this politics as moderation uh, is another uh, limit for populists. Uh, if we have populism that can provide uh, new ideas and engage people, and at the same time debate with the others, taking them seriously, it is probably something that can be utilized positively. But if not, of course, it's uh, clearly a danger for democracy. This understanding of populism, of course, is much milder than many uh, proposed here. Actually, also mainstream politicians use populist tactics. Uh, if you think of it, maybe 10, 20 years back, you certainly can remember politicians using colorful language, quite uh, uh, strong uh, uh, positions, uh, and so on, and so on. So, it is a question of degree. Somehow, uh, it has already been said, but not today, it's like a drug. Uh, if you take it uh, in moderation, it could help you. If you uh, 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 start uh, depending on the drug, uh, uh, then uh, it's uh, another story. So this is, uh, I think, uh, the current uh, my reading of, of populism and its uh, possible contributions and, and uh, problems. But now, Let's put it to the context. If we think of what has been said about our <laughs> contemporary context, um, the issue of economic globalization uh, was uh, uh, clearly visible, but maybe not um, structured uh, enough. In fact, uh, Economic globalization has been a force for good for quite many regions of the world. If uh, jobs move, wages move, uh, it is a possibility for many people to find uh, meaningful employment and uh, uh, decent wages. However, for the Western democracies, it has been uh, mostly a sad story. They were richer, uh, and uh, uh, of course, if you are going towards uh, more equality across the world, uh, the richer ones may lose out. And uh, 
we have not heard it very much here, but uh, uh, we know uh, uh, the critique about uh, uh, differences of incomes with uh, top 1%. And then uh, the rest uh, of the uh, population in the US. It's a wider problem with uh, smaller chances for Western workers or employees of any kind. Uh, the elites have uh, managed much better, and the inequality has been uh, rising. So, this way, of course. Uh, the anger and, and uh, somehow um, skepticism towards mainstream politics in the West becomes much clearer. clearer. Um, people are just um, seeing their life is not getting better as a rule. Uh, I would add a, a specific Estonian flavor for it, and it's uh, the issue of automatization, ICT, uh, and uh, 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 artificial intelligence. All these uh, trends hold the possibility of um, reducing the jobs further, not only in the Western world, but uh, across the globe. So, at least in some way, the source of anger can be uh, framed in economic terms. It can be expanded further, but uh, uh, it's not the time point for this now. Uh, what I would also like to uh, emphasize is uh, the non-economic aspects of uh, 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 malcontent. It is uh, related to the possibilities of uh, uh, a civic agency, uh, some kind of uh, self-esteem, um, uh, optimistic prospects towards politics. And uh, especially, at least based on electoral results, we see uh, the younger generations born after the neoliberal turn have become hugely pessimistic. The Corbyn vote, the Sanders vote, etc., comes from the younger people who have experienced uh, this uh, new economic order. Now, uh, the answers for uh, such challenges have been rather weak. Mainstream politics, briefly uh, telling, has not found any uh, very fresh answers. Uh, but also uh, left-wing populism with its uh, uh, bottom-up democracy initiatives has somehow uh, uh, passed uh, its momentum, at least its first momentum. The failure of uh, Syriza, uh, Five Star Movement, uh, maybe Podemos, uh, is a clear indicator that uh, the super diversity uh, uh, is not getting an absolute majority and then, of course, uh, it's uh, the question of pragmatism. And left-wing populism uh, maybe has not found its key to the pragmatic aspect of politics as compromises and coalition building. Maybe it will change, let's see. So now, it's all but uh, understandable the right-wing populists have their moment. And their slogan is rather straightforward. I put, uh, 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 let's say, uh, uh, collars, uh, they are advertising uh, uh, slogans uh, that somehow capture their message uh, in a nutshell. So this is uh, the Estonian version of uh, national populism. Most probably it is uh, 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 
spread uh, also in other countries. But I chose an Estonian one to uh, show how they frame it here. So they call all others socialists. This is uh, in Estonia uh, particularly, uh, let's say, bad, bad uh, naming. And they say that European socialists have the dream of promoting uh, uneducated, unemployed uh, 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 immigrants uh, while despising uh, slightly educated, unemployed, uh, uh, homeless uh, locals. So um, uh, the additional flavor is, of course, uh, that uh, the immigrant has four children and uh, the uh, unemployed local none. Uh, so there is a clear construction of danger, but it's not only xenophobic, it's also something I would term broadly left-wing, because they somehow promise something vague to this unemployed, uh, un uh, less educated uh, uh, people at the expense of uh, the others. This is, of course, uh, captured by the left wing. There is a counter uh, poster here. Uh, you can read that uh, uh, the billionaire uh, says uh, to white worker that the black one is uh, trying to get his cookie but look at the place, uh, plate of the billionaire. So, um, somehow, now, it's also, to an extent, uh, quite uh, gloomy. Uh, so, uh, it's, uh, uh, let's say, it seems like we are in deep shit. Um, um, and you know, uh, Somehow, uh, it's a question of perspective. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, not only in this framework, uh, but also uh, the uh, way of constructing your situation. Of course, uh, we can speak of economic hardship and uh, state uh, authorities uh, penetrating everywhere and uh, monitoring everyone. But it's only one framing of the situation. As already uh, uh, reminded, uh, the realm of the political has always uh, possibilities, at least uh, so long as it is human-based. If it's supercomputer-based, this I don't know. But uh, so far we have a human-based uh, politics. So sooner or later, elites, ideologies, governance styles, better and worse of groups change. At least it has been the case uh, so far. So, uh, Lippmann even uh, shows very nicely how the technological changes of, uh, let's say, first and maybe even second industrial revolution uh, were mediated politically eventually. So, uh, uh, based on these two uh, aspects of uh, politics, uh, many possibilities and moderation and coalition building, we can envisage a future. Uh, moderate populism can be here of some help. Radical populism or extreme populism is, of course, a, a, a problem. So, uh, to conclude, I will just uh, show uh, uh, this um, uh, picture. Um, uh, in one way, of course, uh, the situation is quite uh, bad here. Um, and it's much different from the uh, current national populist or uh, even left populist framings, at least they are mainstream. But uh, at the same time, we see here also some seeds of agency. People are together. Uh, they uh, will somehow react to uh, uh, the message. 
it will be negotiations. And even more better, probably the machine does the work and people have more uh, resources and more time for uh, defining their future course. So, uh, in some ways, uh, democratic citizenship that I have been studied is focused slightly uh, to the issue similar to populism, but with a much more peaceful and emancipatory uh, perspective. People need to be together. Uh, there needs to be some kind of politics as possibilities and moderation, but it all doesn't necessarily uh, take the form of uh, let's say, gigantic battles between populist leaders. It can be done much more in moderation. So I think populism is not an existential threat, but just something to be managed. Uh, like uh, drugs, wine, whatever that uh, people can manage. Thank you.